This is Ann Jarena Love, and today I'm interviewing Mike Cohen of the Center for Brain Training in Jupiter, Florida, about brain mapping and how important it can be for targeting treatment options. Mike, to start with, why don't you take a minute or two and tell us about your clinic and your experience in neurofeedback? I've been involved in neurofeedback since 1996, so that's about 17 years at this point. We've developed two neurofeedback centers one in Boca Raton and one in Jupiter, Florida. We focus on helping people get their brain working better and that covers a lot of different kinds of issues from sleep to attention to mood to anxiety to migraines. Today we're talking about brain mapping and why don't you start with telling us what brain mapping is. Brain mapping gives us a tool for helping identify what's going on in the brain, what kind of problem are we really targeting, how are we going to help address that problem. And if you don't have some kind of picture or some kind of pattern that you can identify, you're not really sure often what you're dealing with. There's a variety of different kinds of brain maps including spec scans and MRIs and something called quantitative EEG. We focus on quantitative EEG uh, type brain maps because it most correlates to a lot of how we process information. And why is a brain map important for what you do with neurofeedback? Well, it's not only important for what we do in neurofeedback, but it, it, in helping come up with strategies for change. When you see a specific brain pattern in quantitative EEG identifies where your EEG, your brain pattern, differs from the average. If there is a significant difference in your left temporal lobe compared to other people's left temporal lobe, what is that affecting and how does that create some of the problems that you may be dealing with and that you don't that you inadvertently don't even know? It allows us, it allows anyone really doing neurofeedback, if you have a good map and know how to use that, to come up with a strategy, not only what the problem is, but how to address the problem. How do you get people to make changes to that pattern that allow them to function better, to sleep better, to control their emotions better, to control their attention? It's a very practical tool, and sometimes it helps identify what medication might be appropriate. 